<laughs> that's some Johnny Cash kind of bass going on right there. That's so much fun. Welcome, everybody, to Dulce America. My name is Bing Fush. Thank you very much for joining me. Today, I'm going to show you how you can incorporate walking bass lines and alternating bass lines to uh, spice up your arrangements, put some movement into your music, and make things a lot more interesting. I'll show you some secrets. It can be tricky, but I'll show you how to get things rolling here pretty quick. Before I go any further, though, I want to say hello to one of my patrons on Patreon, Susan Hammonds. Susan, thank you very much for pledging recently, and I hope you're enjoying all of the bounty of fun stuff that you can find on my Patreon feed. You and every single one of my patrons is responsible for making things so much easier here in the studio. From helping to keep data flowing to purchasing new equipment and upgrading gear, you guys are a very, very important part of what I do on a daily basis, and I want to thank you so very, very much. If you're out there trying to figure out what's happening with Patreon, what is it exactly? It is a subscription service like Netflix or Hulu. Basically, $5 a month will get you in the door, and you have access to everything that I've ever done. All my self-published books, CDs, tablature, video, and a whole lot more. Then, you also get everything that I'm doing every single week for just $5 a month. That's only $60 a year, and that would cost two for them like three books, and that's it. This gets you unlimited usage and downloading of everything and everything that I've got coming down the pike into the future. If you're interested in finding out more about Patreon, visit this URL down here, patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go to the Featured Tag section, click on Open House, download everything you find there, and if you like what you see in here, do think about becoming a patron like Susan. Again, Susan, I thank you very, very much. So we're going to get into the skinny of it now. How to bring bass into your mixture. We have three strings, our bass string, middle string, and our melody string. And normally we're pretty engaged strumming across all of those strings at one time. And the bass changes when we change chords. And the appropriate note is there, uh, whether we're playing uh, a basic chord, inverting that chord. We've got some different options. Sometimes with our chords, the root of the chord is what we're playing on the bass. Like a, with a 310 chord, it's a G major chord. The notes are G, B, and D. G is the lowest note, the root, and we are indeed playing the lowest note right here on the bass string at the third fret. But if I invert that chord to a 0-1-3, the lowest note being played now is D, and the highest note being played is the root. But it still works as a G major chord. But when you're doing certain types of arrangements, it's important to get that root there so that things sound the way that they should, at least the way you would like them to. So being aware of that's one thing, but being aware of what notes to hit when you're going for that bass run or pendulum swing or whatever else is important. So let's go back over what makes up a chord. A chord is made up of three notes. We have a root, the lowest note in the chord, the third, which is the note in the middle, and the fifth, which is the highest pitched note in the chord. And that's just standard. We can rearrange all of those notes and get different inversions. But it's really super important to know what those notes are in a chord. So, for example, let's look at D major. D major, the root would be D. The third, the major third, would be F sharp. And the fifth would be A. When you're playing bass, one of the most important things to hit to support a chord is going to be that root note. So if you've got a D major chord, you want to have a D on the bass. If it's just sitting there and not doing anything, it'll work fine. But if you want to put a little bit of motion inside of that, then you can do something called using your fours and fives. In fact, there's an old joke. How many uh, bass players does it take to change a light bulb? One. No. Four. No. One. No. Five. And what those numbers are are the scale degrees, the notes of the scale. In the case of D major, one being D, four being G, D, E, F sharp, G, fourth note of the scale. Fifth note of the scale is A, D, E, F sharp, G, A, or one, two, three, four, five. So the five chord, or the five note, would be A, and one, two, three, four, 
the four note would be G. So a bass player is going to incorporate that going back and forth. You could play a D chord. We're already hitting the D as the bass by hitting the open on the bass string. If I want to put some more motion in there, I could go to the four, or I could go to the five, and back to the one. And for what I'm trying to get across today, the safe bet is going to be to go for the five. So you're going for the bottom of the chord, and you're going for the top of the chord. And if you play those two notes, you're going to be able to get some really nice stuff. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here with something, I'll move through D, G, and A and, uh, and move the uh, bass accordingly. Okay, so there's a lot going on right there. Let me explain what I've got going on. First of all, for D major, I'm going for a, a one and five bass alternating uh, range. So I'm going from one to five. So I'm playing D and A on the bass string. One, two, two beats on D, two beats on A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. Then when I go to the G chord, I'm making a 3-1-0 G major chord. So I've already got the G happening right there. Now, instead of going upwards uh, to D, see at the seventh fret, that D doesn't sound really bass-like anymore. It's not really a low note. So I'm going down to D instead. So as I'm playing the G uh, three one zero G chord, all I have to do is let go of the G to open and keep my finger right there on the middle string at the first fret. Then I'm back to my open D when I play D major and coming up here to the five. Now this is tricky, but it's a great way of doing it. I want to play the bass alternating for uh, A major. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep my thumb there at the fourth fret so I got that A. And then I'm going to form a 4-2-1 A major chord, which I will then invert into a 1-2-4. We've got A up here, we've got E down here. So by switching the inversion, I'm getting a alternating bass. And then back to D. So you got two things happening. First, you've got the chords that are being changed, and then you've got this bass that's moving. And it's not moving a whole bunch. It's hanging out uh, playing half notes. So it's hanging out for two beats as you're moving positions. So if you're singing, you can do that just getting used to making those changes. Another thing you can do is you can put in some passing tones in that bass line so you can run up to the notes that you're going to be changing. Watch how I add in some extra notes like that Johnny Cash type of intro that I did here.
that's some pretty fancy finger work and it's very very simple to do just do it very very slowly when you first begin playing it and play it over and over again until that muscle memory kicks in and the more you play it and the more you play with it the more you're going to find yourself using it when you're singing or when you're playing fiddle tunes or other types of things and of course you can move those notes wherever you want to I try to keep them in the first four fret range because that's where the notes are going to be the lowest and the juiciest but you can certainly walk them all the way up to the seventh fret if you want to in fact that uh, opening bass line I played is what I do when I'm playing bass along with uh, Black Mountain Rag listen to how this works so you get an idea you can just kind of move those things back and forth as long as you're hitting the one and the five or the one and the four of the associated scale and the associated chord it's a lot of fun and uh, to give you an example of how I might use it in a singing situation, I'll do some Hank Jr. for you. It goes something like this. Country music singers, I've always been a real close family. But lately, some of my kinfolk have disowned a few others than me. Well, I guess it's because I kind of changed my direction. Lord, I guess I went and broke their family tradition. And voila, you've got walking bass and a lot of fun stuff happening there for your arrangement to spice things up. Try it next time you're jamming out with somebody. And if you're bored with playing the melody or you're bored playing chords, try just playing a bass line while you're in the jam. It's a lot of fun, and you'll also discover a lot of cool new tricks while you're doing that. Speaking of tricks, let me show you a couple of things I'm doing to make this bass string sound even bassier. I'm using a right hand palm mute. And so if you lay that down on the strings, a couple of things happens. One is by muting it, we're going from a shiny sound to a more warmer, deeper sound. We're also taking some of that sustain out to um, issue a bit more control when we're playing this stuff so you don't have these notes bouncing all over each other. So, another thing I'm doing is I'm adding in other little chick booms in there and that is adding some rhythm to everything. So, let's say for example you're playing a bass dulcimer. You're not going to be playing chords, you're simply going to be using the bass to accompany your group or another person. You can focus on one note at a time, one string at a time, and use that right hand palm mute to round out the tone and also control the amount of sustain so you get a nice, sharp, punchy bass sound to go along with everything. So, you can use your um, new toolbox tricks with the bass to flesh out your arrangements and have some more fun in the jam. If you want to get into the bass dulcimer, you've got a wide open palette to be able to play all kinds of neat walking bass lines, pendulum bass lines, and things of that nature. So I hope you enjoy it, I hope you use it, and I would love to see you guys out there in the jam rocking the bass and having a lot of fun with it. Until next time, my friends, this is Bing Futch. We'll see you soon.